Let's brainstorm the causes of an event using a fishbone diagram in Excel. Let's insert a shape at the top, and this is going to be the fish head, so let's draw that in place. And then you can go up to shape format and you can choose the quick styles here. We can go with an ombre type style, but pick anything that you like. And then let's control C, control V to copy paste. Then what you can do is under shape format, you can actually edit the shape so you don't have to go through and pick the style again. So let's change the shape to a triangle and this is going to be the fish tail. So let's keep rotating that. We're going to resize it down and then rotate it and let's move it into place. Next, we need to connect these two so you've got the fish spine. So we're going to insert a shape and a line, and let's draw that across. And anytime you're drawing a line, if you hold shift while you're doing it, it will keep that line straight for you. And this is looking pretty good. Now let's go up to the styles and let's choose a thicker line. So next, what we want to do is insert another shape, and we're going to draw these angled lines in here. And I'm going to go up to that format again and go with the same thicker line. And then let's control C, control V and start moving these into place. Now you can do as many as you need. We're going to do a total of six of these main lines. And then we're going to have the smaller lines for our ideas coming off of these. So let's move this into place and then change the direction. Try to make sure it's somewhat lined up and then let's again control c control v to paste so you don't have to reformat the line each time now we can make this fish head a little bit larger i am on a mobile screen if you were on a computer you might want to make this longer in length so that your ideas will fit better but for now we're just on a mobile size screen so now let's enter problems or opportunity this is where you would post your problem so that you could make it really clear that these are the things that we're trying to brainstorm to solve this problem so I'm going to do some formatting here. I'm going to bold it and I'm going to increase the font size a little bit. Want to make sure it still fits. That looks pretty good. Now next, if I go back up to shapes again, I need to draw in the horizontal lines. So I'm going to same thing, make that the same level of thickness as the other lines are, make it a little bit longer and copy and paste. And again, if you are on a computer, you can make these much longer so you could fit more text. Then what I'm going to do is press shift and click on each one and I'm going to control C, control V. You'll see in a second that this is where all of the text boxes are going to go so that you can enter ideas here. And now for this one, we will just move these to the other direction, move those in place. And again, you can pick however many lines you need. I am doing three wide and three down on each arm, if you will, or fin. Um, let's do a control C, control V again, and now we've got all of our lines in place. So next what we need to do is we need to label what these ideas are going to be. So let's change that shape again and resize it down. You could change the colors on these if you'd like them to stand out more. And let's change this to people. So we want these to be the themes of what we think the causes might be. So let's say we've got people and then we'll copy and paste this with, again, control C, control V, let's say information. Let's say this one is maybe system type issues. This one could be process type issues. Maybe you additionally have some things like resources and let's just leave one open for brainstorming. So it looks good, everything's in place. So now you have your diagram, but we also need to insert text boxes so that you can actually type in here. So we're going to insert another shape and we're just going to call this idea. And then we're going to go up to the format and we're going to make sure this is no fill and no outline. We don't need a border on it. And then let's move this into place. And then again, you can control C this and control V to paste these. And if you press shift and click on each one, it will highlight all of them, which makes the copying and pasting much easier. So I am just going to copy and paste this top portion here just for demonstration, but you will want to make sure that you copy and paste these to each line. And if you go to the lesson 122 in the workbook or 121B, I should say in the workbook, you will see that this template is already done for you. So you can just use that template if that's easier. So next let's go to insert or font. And what we want to do is we want to select these cells at the bottom because we need to put some more information here. So we're going to clear out this middle section and turn that white. And now what we need to do is let's insert borders and we need to put some headings in here. So let's say you've got a number and you've got the action you want to take 
and then you'll need status. And we can enter or turn colors, I should say, this fill of a good light gray to get your nice header there. And then, you know what, let's also add one more for the owner. And then let's go through and merge and center these. Merge and center works perfectly well here because there is no filtering. This is just a chart. So now I'm going to merge and center these blank cells so that there's more room to type. And we're going to do each one here and then the status as well. And now once you do these all the way across, you can just highlight these and drag them down and it will do it for all of them. So now let's go in here and we could even change this to be a little bit nicer looking where you could do some dashed lines if you'd like for the border. So if you wanted to change up what that looks like, you can leave that vertical line the way it is. There we go. So next, let's align this center. The rest of it's looking pretty good. So now let's enter some samples in here. So let's just do one, two, three, four, and then let's just type in sample for our actions and some owners. We could put in some initials of who might own those actions. And then in status, we want to make a drop down. So let's select all of our cells, go up to data validation, and then we need this list here. So if you select the list, you can just type in the three options here. So let's say we've got a, a status of started, done, and not started. We're going to hit okay. And now we've got our drop downs. So next what we need to do is we want to, let's say, turn these colors based on that status. So let's go to conditional formatting. And when it's equal to started, let's do a custom format. Let's do a light yellow. And then we have to repeat this step for each status. So when it's equal to done, let's say green. So we'll do custom again, choose a green. And then let's say for the last one, we're going to go back here to equals. And if it's not started, let's do custom again. And let's say you pick a red, but maybe it's not quite the red that you'd like. So you can go to more colors here and lighten that up a little bit. Hit okay and okay. And you've completed your fishbone diagram. Test it out.